from the News Channel 5 Network, this is Inside Politics. Well, I'm News Channel 5's political analyst, Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. He's become a leader in Nashville's efforts to fight COVID-19. You've seen his face and heard his comments frequently during the televised briefings about the virus coming from the mayor's office several times each week for some months now. The infectious disease specialist, Dr. James Hildreth, is president and CEO of Meharry Medical College, and he's our guest on Inside Politics this week. Dr. Hildreth, welcome to the program. We certainly appreciate you taking time to be with us. Thank you for having me. I'm pleased to be here with you today. Uh, Vice President Mike Pence had an op-ed piece in the Wall Street Journal this week that said America has won the war on the silent enemy, the virus. Uh, I have a feeling you don't quite feel like we've got the war won yet. Is that right? <laughs> no, we're, we're far from having a victory, I have to say. And if you look at what's happening around the country, in some states like Utah, Florida, uh, Nevada, and other places, clearly the virus is winning uh, in those places. And, you know, if you're going to win a battle, all the troops have to be fighting from the same battle plan. And one of our problems, quite honestly, is that as a nation, for sure, we're not all fighting from the same battle plan. Some states are doing much better than others. And since the virus does not respect borders, until all of us have this um, unified, you know, coordinated strategy, it's going to be difficult to win this fight. When you mentioned the states where you're seeing an uptick in, in cases or, or a spike, uh, you didn't mention Tennessee. Do you think Tennessee's in that? There are some national listings that have Tennessee as one of the states that's spiking in cases. Well, I mean, clearly there's been an uptick in cases in, in uh, Tennessee. If you look at our overall curve for a number of cases, uh, we certainly have not flattened the curve overall as a state just yet. Um, and I think in large part is due to what happened over Memorial Day weekend. And if you just look around, some of us individually are doing the things we need to do to control the virus. But unfortunately, many people are not and are not taking the, the pandemic very seriously, to be quite honest. For two and weeks. so here in Tennessee and all over the country, that is the case. And that's our most, that's our biggest challenge right now is getting people to take it seriously. For two weeks now, we've been stuck in phase two of our reopening here in Nashville. Uh, did we open too early? Are we, are we stuck? Are we going to stay stuck until we get whatever the, the outbreak is that seems to have spiked down in the southeast part, in the Antioch part of town? Well, I think, thankfully, Mayor Cooper made the decision as a city to, to put the mitigation protocols in place fairly early compared to some other cities in the south. And I think the mayor has been committed to using data. You know, there's six matrices that we use to make these decisions. And I think we are, I don't want to say stuck, but if you look at the numbers over the last couple of days, there have been uh, pretty large numbers, 172, uh, 300, et cetera. But some of that is due to a lag in the testing of the samples that were collected in early June. So that notwithstanding, clearly, there are many more cases now than there were, and I think that's attributable to a number of things, one being the Memorial Day weekend, uh, the, the marches and rallies, where you have people in large numbers in close spaces yelling at the top of their lungs, creating aerosols. And if you're not wearing a mask in that setting, clearly you're doing the virus a favor and promoting transmission. So uh, I think that overall, we're, we're moving, as a nation, we're moving too fast back to reopening the economy because the virus is not done with us yet. And one of the things that, that Vice President Pence said that I totally disagree with is that there's not going to be a second wave. In a way, he's correct because we're not going to be done with the first wave if we're not careful. It's just going to be, we're going to be dealing with the virus as a challenge, as a real challenge until we get our act together. And as a nation, focus on putting it behind us. We're not doing that. But if the second wave is starting now, uh, it's going to get even worse in the fall, right? Because that's when the flu season starts. And particularly if we have some flu strains that are particularly virulent this year, you'll have that and the virus going on at the same time. That's right. And the, the prospect of dealing with influenza, if it happens to be a particularly uh, bad influenza season, on top of that, having COVID-19 is, is pretty much, it's very scary, let me put it that way. Uh, and also in the fall when people start to go back inside more and typically, you know, you have kids sitting in classrooms or students in lecture halls. So we have to be really careful, people sitting in churches. So 
The fall and winter tend to promote transmission because people are inside, closed in together with each other. So we, and that's why getting the virus under control now over the summer is so very important so that the fall and winter won't be such so much of a challenge. And we really need to be focused on that. You mentioned the demonstrations that have been going on across the country as well as here in Nashville. Are you saying that that is some of the reason we're seeing some increased cases here in Nashville to this point? I haven't heard any city officials saying that had anything to do with it, but you think perhaps we are beginning to see some of that coming from the demonstrations? I, I, well, you know, typically within two weeks of, of a transmission event, that's when you see the virus manifest itself. So really, we are, you know, two weeks away or three weeks away from possibly seeing larger numbers of cases due to the marches. And we need to keep in mind that some of those individuals who are coming to the marches are not from Davidson County, they're from outside of the county, as I understand it. So uh, that, uh, that is also a contributing factor because if you come from a place where the virus has not been mitigated and you come into another area where it has been, there's a prospect that the virus could be introduced into a place where we've done a great job of controlling the virus. Now we're getting the virus being brought in by human vectors from other places. So in a couple of weeks, with certainty, we will see whether or not the marches have been impactful. But it's hard to imagine how they cannot be. If you just witness what happens in those places, knowing that people can be asymptomatically infected or pre-symptomatically infected, it's predictable that there are going to be an uptick in cases as a result of all this. So if I'm saying it. <laughs> if this was a conventional war, yes. would you say we're losing it at this point? Well, it, it would be hard to say that there hasn't been an overall victory, because I think there are some, some places in the country where the communities have taken it very seriously. I mean, New York was, was just pounded by the virus, and you can actually see that they've done a good job of keeping their curve flat. There are other places that I already mentioned that first of all, they didn't really put mitigation protocols in place around the whole state, you know, Texas being one example, uh, where you can actually see that now they're having their highest cases since we started fighting the virus. And since the virus does not respect borders, city borders, county borders, state borders, what I'm saying is that as a nation, having so many states that have the virus not under control means that as a nation, we're certainly not winning. We're winning. We're not winning the fight. Okay. Uh, and what is needed is a coordinated strategy where all of us are playing from the same playbook. Dr. James Hildreth of Harry Medical College, President and CEO there, also a key member of the city's coronavirus task force, is our guest on Inside Politics. Back to continue our conversation with the doctor after these messages.